So we are back on this 30 by 40 garage and I'm gonna do my best to take you guys through how we build these so that, you know, this is the size of shop, garage, building, whatever, that I think just about anybody can build. Yes, you might not have a mega deck, you might not have a Kubota skid loader, but I've built these with none of those. Um, you can go rent an auger, put some holes in the ground, and most of this stuff is liftable by a couple guys. So 30 by 40, 12 foot tall is what we're doing here. Not everybody needs that. Sometimes uh, 10 foot is all you need. So um, first thing I'm gonna do is get the rotary laser set up. Last time we were here, we dug the holes, we set these, and it's been a couple days now. So we're back, we're gonna start building on them. I am gonna, even though we set all these off of a laser, I'm gonna go back around and I'm gonna get my laser measurement to grade once again on each one of these brackets. Once the laser is set up, I'm going to, I've already done this for the sake of TV, uh, found the highest bracket, which when I get my laser mark is 41 and 3 8 Now I've also gone around and looked at the rest of them. And what that means is my goal was to have these concrete piers about six inches below finished concrete on the inside okay this is going to get a concrete floor i wanted it about six inches below the top of the concrete which means in averages what i found is we're really close to 40 inches being my grade so i'm going to come in here or sorry 40 inches is where i want my actual grade board bottom to be so at, you're my laser greg <laughs> So at 41 and 3 8 I'm going to mark this bracket 1 and 3 8 What that means is my post is going to come up and at about 1 and 3 8 from the top of the bottom of that post, that's where my grade board is going to be and that's what's going to be consistent. That measurement is going to be consistent around all of these brackets. So pretty simple. So 41, 15, 16, which means 1, 15, 16. So pretty simple. I'm going to go around and do that all, every bracket, and then we'll go ahead and use these measurements on our story pole to make up our post. So now that we have every measurement for every post, I've got it on my little block. I'm going to put it by my horses, and then these are... These are Ohio Timberland, and these are three-ply laminated two-by-sixes. Every board goes through a mill to bring it to a true dimension. So when I take a tape measure to these posts, they're actually not five and a half. They're only five and three-eighths. And instead of four and a half, they're more like four and a quarter. But what that does is that allows us to know exactly that every post is perfect. The other thing you'll notice about these posts, oh, a little little trick for you too, metal banding. You don't want to stand in front of it, but just put your, just put the claw of your hammer in there. Break right in half. Anyway, what you'll notice about these posts is they come with the center notch loose. So this way, once we determine exactly where everything is, we can cut this center block to accept our truss. That way we cut this to be perfect for our truss to go right in the inside. And you'll see that later. So the key to the efficiency side of making up your post on the ground is a story pole. And all that is is a two by four, that, or it could be a two by six, whatever, just some long piece of wood or whatever material that you're going to keep and use on every one of your posts. And so what we're gonna do is first off, the bottom of this two by four is gonna be our grade, okay? That is when we were doing our laser marks on our brackets, that dimension, that plus one and three quarters, one and five sixteenths, that is from the bracket plus one and five sixteenths is the bottom of this board on our post. So hopefully that makes sense. It'll probably make more sense as we go, but I'm gonna hook my bottom of my story pole. This is a 12 foot wall. So I'm gonna mark 12 foot. Now what that is, is that is gonna be the heel of our truss. That's the bottom of our truss on every post. The next thing I'm going to do 
is I'm going to determine the top of our post, which I already know, but I'm gonna do it here on the, I got a calculator app I use, it's called Builder's Helper on iOS. And basically I'm gonna do 12 foot, okay? Cause I know that's our height of our, that's the height of our post or the height of our wall. I'm going to add 15 and a half inches, which is the height of the heel of our truss. And then I'm gonna add three and 11 sixteenths. And I, let's see, 11, yes, 11 sixteenths. That is the dimension uh, height wise of a two by four when on a 412 pit. So without going too deep, uh, you know, you can always uh, DM me or ask me later if you wanna get more in depth into this. That is 13, seven and three sixteenths. Now that is the very highest point of the framing on our wall. I then am going to take away our overhang pitch, which is a 412 pitch roof. We got a one foot overhang. So on that one foot, I'm going to go down the hill four inches. So I'm gonna take away four inches. Then I'm gonna take away the fascia dimension, which we use a two by six. So I'm gonna take away another five and a half inches. So that leaves me that leaves me with 12 foot nine and 11 sixteenths. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark 12 foot nine, 11 sixteenths. What this is, that is the top of our last girt on our post. And that is also, that is the top of our soffit. So what we do is we mark this on every post. We put a two by six here. And we know when we go to run our soffit trim, as long as it's flush on the top of this board, it's gonna be perfect where we want it. Okay, so now the next thing to do, and this is where consistency and efficiencies help save you time. We always go 39 inches for the bottom of our Wayne's coat nailer. So that's always going to be 39. I know that. And the reason we do that is our Wayne's coat will come up onto this two by six in a good dimension that we'll be able to put our trims and everything works out real nice. Now the next thing I always do is I take from that uh, Wayne's coat mark to the top of our soffit um, nailer, which this is about 115 inches. And I'm always trying to determine a good dimension for our wall girt spacing. So I already know that these are 30 inch spacings because it just works out good. So now all I'm gonna do is from this um, Wayne's coat nailer is I'm gonna mark every 30 inches. So 30, 60, 90. And then the next one is gonna be our soffit nailer. Go ahead and square these all around. And that's our story pull. So now what we can do is I've got Got all the dimensions of all of our posts I'm gonna hook the bottom of the column and I'm gonna go one three quarters square that line that is the grade measurement that we always talk about I then take my story pole I set it to that grade mark and I come through and I mark every mark on this post forgot to mark my uh, cutoff height. We were talking about all these dimensions, but this is where we're gonna cut off the tops of our post. Okay. So by having that dimension, we are able to have a consistent top cut on the pitch of all of our posts. So. All I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna do that same process on every one of these posts right here and then we'll get them over to the building so we can start building the walls. We're gonna take all of the grade marks from earlier, put them on the bottom of these posts and then use our story pole to quickly and efficiently make the exact same marks on every post. Now that all of our columns are marked from our story pole, it's time to make them up. And there's a couple different steps that I have to do at the end. One being what you see me doing here where I'm cutting the ears back to a 412 pitch. And that is going to line up 
with the tops of our purlins for the most part. I like to do that just because it makes it look more professional. One of the other steps we have to do is I have all of our columns come with that center notch knocked out and not glued in or fastened so I can pull it out real quickly like this and wherever we designated our heel mark on the post I'm going to cut it right there. Once this is cut I'm going to actually put it right back in in the pocket and that will now be the height of our truss and so obviously with the story pole with the laser this is going to allow us to guarantee that our trusses are all installed at the exact same height and obviously that's important for many reasons um, but we like to use some 20 penny nails this is kind of uh, a part where we could use the jumbo nailer to do this a little bit quicker but i actually enjoy just swinging the hammer a little bit so we're going to cut our ears off we're going to uh, just repeat this process many times but uh, all in one spot on some sawhorses not up in the air a lot of guys will put their post up long wild and then come back through later and cut them at the truss height. I'd prefer to do it now. It looks better, it looks more professional, and when you leave for the night and the customers are looking at it, they just think everything looks good. doing here is putting a interior board and this is going to define our corner and we do it now instead of later once again it's efficient and easy here versus when the walls are already stood up and what this what this board is doing is because really hard to explain but basically we're trying to build out the corner to a five and a half dimension so when our wall girts on the inside come into the corner they will hit this uh, two by six right here And what we're using too is these are 20 penny ring shank galvanized nails. We use all galvanized, that way they won't corrode in any treated lumber, even though this is supposed to be non-corrosive. So then we've got our, our story pole that we also mark the inside mark so we can have all of our girts on the inside. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line up the heel to the heel on my corner board, mark it. What you're seeing us do here is a little bit different than the sidewall columns. These are our end wall columns. In order to be efficient, I go ahead and order the exact same size columns for all posts, but I want my end wall columns to go all the way up to the top of the truss. So I use that builder's app to get a calculation for height and I extend my center notch to go all the way up to the top of the truss and I do that to add a lot of strength to the end wall and get a connection from ground to the top of the truss. Once all of our columns are made we're going to lay them out to the corresponding bracket and then lay out our wall girts on all those designated marks from our story pole and this is where a lot of efficiency comes into play instead of sanding each column individually we do the wall as a unit and it makes it a ton easier. I swear this is the, still the same day. Uh, we just got back from lunch, put on my buddy Eshman Constructions t-shirt he sent us. Greg's got one. He uh, did the sleeveless framer look for us today because it is a little bit sultry out here. Um, we got the Hitachi compressor fired up, which means the jumbo nailer from Fasco is coming out. You can see it right here. This is definitely not something that your average homeowner is going to have. This thing shoots up to a six and three eighths nail. You can see it's quite large uh, F91 and what we're shooting these are four inch ring shank galvanized. They have the diamond coating which makes the nail go in easier and hold stronger. Also full round head that's going to increase holding power. I tell you what, this is a legit fastener. It holds way better than a hand-driven 20-penny ring shank. So, time to get to work. We'll get all these nailed up. And we'll be able to stand up these walls in one section at a time. So, no worries about any splices. But right now, working on the ground, that is what's going to be efficient. It's going to be easy. You're going to be able to be precise. And you can control a lot of variables by doing it on the ground. What I 
like about the jumbo nailer is obviously a you don't have to swing a hammer even if that is fun but when you're doing splice connections like this driving a nail you don't get split out like you do when you drive a nail but when we get to these top boards where we have to put a nail in this ear instead of using the gun and having a possible blowout we like to hand drive this connection so we'll come back and hit that one thing we also always try to do that you got to consider is that this nailer row right here is the wainscoat nailer and this is the one everybody looks down this is the one that you want as straight as possible so try to get the best material possible out of your pile to use on this row Time. like why are you saying it's a big deal well in post frame typically you're not going to use a nail gun like a pass load or even the Hitachi uh, or DeWalt cordless for that matter because you can't shoot a big enough nail you can't shoot a large enough diameter nail or a big enough ring shank nail and you really need that in the post frame because that's where the strength is at these connections we got the walls all put together lickety splickety with the jumbo nailer now we're gonna go ahead and rig it up to the Cheyenne Teleboom that sucker uh, is priceless on the post frame job site especially when it's uh, buildings usually 48 foot and uh, thinner I guess I would say since we're talking width 48 foot or less we'll use the the Teleboom even though I think it's good up to we've done 60 wides so we're just gonna wrap a couple posts pick this thing right up and once again the point of this process as I about tripped and died uh, the point of this process is to do all the work on the ground use a machine to lift your material into place and hold it while you can make sure things are level straight plumb all that good stuff get it fastened and then let go of the machine that way you're doing very minimal uh, manual labor it's a lot of hard work out here and the less you have to do physically challenge your mind make it simpler in the uh, the labor side.